Welcome back, everyone. We have had a lot of interest in Peter Diema and Kevin Braun's homemade engines and that they built from scratch. Many of you have asked to see the details and how they build these motors. Well, today we're going to show you behind the scenes of one of Pete and Kevin's newest engines in the family. It's a homemade two liter billet competition engine they're building for Bonneville. With us today is Eric from Volley Auto Works in San Diego. He's helping Kevin and Pete with the welding on the, of this new billet two liter motor. Listen in folks, I really think you guys are gonna like this. So that's the sound you want. Yeah. Uh, there's a difference between short arc, long arc, you know, uh, mm -hmm. spray arc is more of a short arc, um, where it's, mm -hmm. it's melting up here before it gets to the material. And then, um, I'm sorry, that's a short arc. A short, uh, that's a long arc. A short arc is where it's arcing right into the material. Mm -hmm. When you're doing a root pass, you want more of that. So as long as you see it burning in, you're getting that crackle. And so the crackle's good? It is. You want to hear that? You want to hear that. That's when you know you, you really got your settings just, just tips. Uh-huh. How much do you need that? 300%. Beautiful. Yeah, that sucker burned in nice. So Eric, the fab man from Volagago Works in San Diego, is going to explain about how he left his previous career for this new job yeah, with Volag and yeah. how he absolutely yeah. loved it. A little over three years ago, I started building race cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the guy just called me up out of the blue and I'm like, with an idea for a business. I'm like, I'm not leaving a secure job for an idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure glad I did. Oh, man. Oh, so now you just do, so you primarily do welding or all type of fab, level of fabrication? I mean, is there a specialization that you do or? It's, I'm the uh, director of fabrication and product development. Okay. So we do all the designs for exhaust systems, high-end exhaust systems. Uh, uh, design roll cages, I've got roll cages, so just pretty much all the metal work that goes into a race car. All right. So this is right up your alley, so coming over here. You put together a car for With us. Pete and <laughs> Kevin, this is it. Actually, we were strictly Porsche, nothing but Porsche. Oh, oh shoot. Now you got some German engineering in this motor. <laughs> Meanwhile, Pete is working on making a bracket for the pneumatic air shift transmission. And Kevin's gonna explain about these used NASCAR valves they buy and use in their motors. So used NASCAR valve. Well, what does used mean? It was like on the workbench and never got installed or? Supposedly they ran, run, ran it, but it was like, I mean, some of them you can probably use, but these, I mean. So these, these what special are these, like sodium filled or no, they're, lightened? They're or? six millimeter and they're titanium. They're, I think these are two, oh, 190 they're head. Yeah, they're like a 150 valve. valve. A buck 50 a valve? Yeah, new, and we're, we, get, we get them used for like, just 25 bucks a set. Oh. That's like four bucks a piece, right? It's actually yeah. cheaper, because I think there's more than that here. I was just looking at this. There's, I already got 32. There's, yeah, there's 48 here. So there's 48. Shit, you can make here. another V12. <laughs> For 100, 106, 170 bucks, 48 valves. So this one looks like it's got a little more. Yeah, some of them are, but some of them you can't tell they're used at all. You look at I think there's, it just blows me away. 2180, a 2180 valve with a six millimeter stem. That's what he makes out of it, Eric. That's that same valve. Was okay. So you just grind this whole 
Top Let's seat and base. Turn them down to what we turn need. Turn them down. Six millimeters still. But so that's what you do. So you basically buy these these two inch valves from NASCAR, right? And then you yeah. mill them down. Turn them down. Turn them down to. We got a we got a hundred fifty dollar valve for a little bit of time and labor yeah. and. I got, I got probably three days in making the valves, but still, it's way cheaper than buying them. Yeah. Now, are those going in this cylinder head for the two liter? Yeah. And that's the head down here, which is a. Well, these I bought for because we want to do that other V8. Want to do a V8 with those Nissan heads? Oh. Are those the M like the Q45 heads or the M45? No, the IRL. ILR. Nissan. Oh, okay. Nissan ran against Oldsmobile in the, in 2000. Yeah. With a Nissan, and the bore center of that engine is four. 409 Chevrolet is 4 400. Okay, so it's 9,000 bigger than a Chevrolet, but we can offset grind the block you know, well, to accommodate 9, it. 9,000 is something that wouldn't nothing. really matter. <laughs> now, the head on the two liter motor is right here on the ground, right? Same head, yeah. that's that the IRL motor, right. okay? Same exactly. So, this is a early 90s, or early 2000, this is early 2000, 2000 IRL. Uh, yeah, sonar head for the Nissan. This competed against the Oldsmobile oh. in 2000. The okay. nice thing about this is this bore center is 4400. Okay. Which is the same as Chevrolet. Or it's 4409. So the block that you're going to mount it on, are you going to fabricate that? That's oh, that's the one he's doing there, but you said the V8. You said you're going to. V8, do we talked to the guys yesterday at PRI to make a block with a short depth. And we want to make another four liter and then we'll make another probably five seven six liter for a production co for a hot rod out of a pair of these that'll be a 350 380 okay. whatever so this is the same cylinder head that's head that you're going to use for the two liter that he's welding right. up right now and then you're going to turn down those valves to fit this head right. with the six millimeter stem right. uh, what newer than that started down to like five and a half what are your projections are on what do you think that's going to do horsepower wise on the two liter? Should hopefully 350, which is two and a half per cubic inch. Okay. So we if, we can, it up a if we can spin it to 12, 11 or 12, we might get close to four. So you're, there's a possibility this thing can peak out 11,000, 12,000 RPM. It'd be nice. It'd yeah. be nice. Mm. Okay. They ran them at 10.5 at Indy. That was their limit. That's as mad as fast as they could go. Because they can make more horsepower at higher RPM. So that's your goal, because you only got to do this for a couple minutes. Yeah, and minute. we're a little leery <laughs> about turning into 12 grand. When motorcycles do. <laughs> that um, Honda, Honda's about two. They make about 200 out of a two liter. A little yeah. bit better, 220. That's 120 inches, so just short of two per inch. So we need to make Two and a quarter, two and a half to call run. Yeah. Well, that's neat. I mean, you know, you think about how much engineering and design and technology is in the Honda S2000 motor. Yeah. And you know what Honda has um, a crew of engineers and machinists, and you and Kevin are able to do this here in your shop. The valve train alone on that engine is unbelievable. Where they've got three lobes. Yeah. They idle on the little lobe and they. The VTEC. They drive it down the road in the middle lobe, and then they, for a hot rod, they turn on the big lobe. That's amazing how they did that. This is our two liter that we just had welded up. We're gonna take it to the heat treater um, next week, have it heat treated because it could get out of pretty hot welding it. Plus, it might have warped and there might be stress in it. So we'll they I think they anneal it to get it caught, yeah. and then they heat treat it, and then back to 6061. Six. So right now you're just kind of dry fitting all the parts that you just. I want to see what it looks like with it with the primary cover on it and the transmission. Not that I want to put the transmission on it. But mock it up because we were going to lay it on a side right you knew that right no i didn't know that so it's a side it's going to be sideways it's going to be well kind of at a you okay like that i'm gonna hurt anything kind of like an old slant six <laughs> a little, um, little more maybe a little less Almost like a, I guess like a Boxster motor then, huh? Um, probably a box, more more like a slant six, you'd say. 
So is this how you're going to actually set it up in the car, yeah. horizontal like this? Yeah. Well, it's got to be sideways in the front. When I say sideways, I mean transverse. This makes the transmission to the engine. This is where the timing chain will go. It goes right about there. Okay. And then you have this little cover. There's your front cover. No, or that cover that? is eliminated because we're going to use. Oh. We're using this. This is going to be. So the takeoff is going to be like right yeah, here. Be right. When you get the angle correct, yeah. You can see the crank hole. Yeah, so this will be in the crank. Yeah, this is a. This is the. Uh, would be the push rod cam. On a small block. Yeah. But on this engine, it's the idler. So we're gonna go from a three inch sprocket here to a six inch here, which will give us half engine speed here. And then we'll run from here to the cams. With the timing belts. Or the chain, timing belt, right. So it's gonna be a short belt. And then Well, you got some gears. These gears go in here. Pretty insane. This will be on the crank. These two will go in here. Right up here. Cavity. Okay. Right there. And then this will go on a shaft that goes to a clutch and clutch here. The transmission will sit right here. Our Liberty six speed will sit right in this hollow there. So that's gonna be a pretty tight, compact yeah. compartment. The driver sits here. His feet will be right up against the sonar head. So you hope it hope it doesn't shoot out a spark plug, right? <laughs> no. Second. So the transmission will sit here. Then we'll have another shaft. The tail shaft of the transmission will be right here. So then we'll have another belt or chain to a, to an idler shaft. And this is an idler shaft or jack shaft. I don't know what you want to call it. But the transmission sits here. There'll be a a chain from here to the tail shaft of the transmission and there'll be another chain from here to an axle you can imagine this a motorcycle axle yeah there'll be cvs on each here and there'll be a tire here and here so all the way to the front we're going to bring the nose from from the ground up to here so it'll get some downforce mm -hmm. we'll have um Shoes or covers, fenders over the wheels, so they're so the air gets trapped between the wheels, mm -hmm. keeps downforce on it. Does this be a streamliner or a lakester? Streamliner. A streamliner. Um, we got to build it, so it's going to be a while. But this is uh, so this is where it's starting. So this is the foundation, really, is the yeah. the engine so block and the configuration. Of hopefully, it. the whole car won't be more than about two feet off the ground. Um, process. I'm going to just film inside of here. I thought this was cool. You can kind of see all the way into the, the chamber. That would be the top of the cylinder head where you can see the exhaust yeah. and the intake valves um, and where the spark plug goes. And then you guys did all this out of billet material. And that's the, this bottom piece here is the girdle. Right. right? So you can see where the, the journal, where the crankshaft's going to go. But that is a pretty neat uh, view because usually you don't see an engine like that. So I'm excited. I like doing this stuff. This well, this is definitely a, a what you call, would you call this a unicorn? <laughs> this is a one of a kind. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah. There's a couple guys that have done motorcycles this way. Motorcycle engines. Yeah. Uh, Derek McLeish, he's, he's got a bunch of cars like this, where he takes a motorcycle engine, puts it here, runs a chain to an axle and two wheels and he's off and running. He's yeah. won point champion a couple times for anything. Yeah. We can get any gear ratio we want with these gears. And that's with a quick changer and gear so you can swap these those are, out. These are the large quick change gears. So like I say, this one will be on the crank. There'll be a ratio 
between these two, or well, we can change these, we can make any ratio we want. So it goes from here, and we got three here to get the rotation, because the, the crank turns this way, right? The transmission turns this way, and the wheel turns mm -hmm. all clockwise. So we've had um, a lot of people ask about the internals, and so they're seeing the bare internals here, the, yeah. the block. This is so. very, yeah. Yeah, very, very, very you know, obviously you don't have the crank, um, but you'll have the, the cam, this is the camshaft blank. That's gonna be for this motor. That so. has not, yeah, that, that's for this motor, but. It has to be ground still. It's, it's not the jack shaft that's gonna go. It's, yeah, it's just representation. It's a transmission here, the tail shaft of the transmission. If you're, a, if you're a gearhead, you'll understand exactly yeah. what I'm saying. Oh, a lot of these guys will. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. So, well, I, I'm sure I'm gonna get, I'm gonna put together something on this, and I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be anxious to see this the progress. This is two years away. Probably. Two years away, it's a sneak peek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm ready throwing around ideas in my head of how to build the chassis. Because it's going to look like a, a polywog, real fat and wide in the front. And then taper down. It's going to be two foot wide in the back and the front. Yeah. And it'll taper down to a point in the back. Um, oh, it looks teardrop, good, Pete. polywog, whatever you want to say. That's... Yeah. Well, thank you again. I think this will be thank some you. neat stuff. Uh, thank people you, will like it. And a lot of folks want to see that big V12 run. So yeah, we're gonna get that we'll have to get that running maybe in the next couple of weeks. I'll maybe I'll help you. Yeah. That'd be cool. Fire that up, make some noise. 